Yeah, I can never doubt myself. I know better. All of you critics be acting like you know better. Ben Rogers Blown MMA Futures, joined today by the one, the only, the man, the myth, the legend, Zach Cummings. How are you doing today? Man? I'm great. I'm great. It's finally, uh, good to sit down, have a conversation with the camera on. <laughs> <laughs> um, man, I'm assuming everybody knows who you are, Zach. You are former UFC fighter. You are 15 fights in the UFC. 14. And 14. The fighter, yeah. 14 the ultimate fighter um but for those of the people that don't know who you are tell us a little bit about your background kind of uh and who you are um well hi my name's zach enjoy long walks on the beach no uh no i uh you know i started playing sports my whole life um football baseball wrestling and then got deeper in the wrestling and football and stuff into college and then i had a bad bad knee injury and then while i was in wrestling i was still kind of dabbling with uh, some muay thai and stuff just some cross training wanted to there wasn't a lot of high level wrestling like during the summer down in Springfield where I grew up so yeah I just I, I met some Muay Thai guy who owned a, a Thai restaurant but didn't realize how good he actually was and <laughs> so yeah I did some extra training and did some cross training that way and then my sophomore year in college I was I was wrestling but that took like a tough man boxing match type thing like bouncers versus bouncers and stuff and and uh, ended up fighting a, a very legit boxer. They had like 100 fights in, and I guess I found out I could fight then. So <laughs> I went through, uh, through a wrestling practice, drove three hours, jumped in the ring, and then uh, had my first boxing match. So it was, uh, it was fun. It's kind of a just do it type thing. Wouldn't expect anything out of it, but just had a good time. And then had a bad knee injury happen during wrestling. So I joined a local gym just to, just to get back in shape. You know, I was really wanting to have that that team camaraderie that you know that sports gave me and then you know I was just unhappy and going to school and going out to clubs and you know hanging out with friends drinking and just not doing the stuff that that makes me happy and stuff so I, I, I joined a, an MMA gym and no desire to fight just wanted to train wanted to practice then after uh, about a month of training I was you know back in one of those little nightclubs hanging out again and then my boy Michael Johnson walked in, which we wrestled with each other in St. Louis. And, uh, and we just started talking and he came down to Springfield football and then got in a fight with the whole football team. So <laughs> so he decided to switch to MMA and then told me the gym he was training at. I was like, bro, I've been there for a month. You haven't been there. <laughs> so Monday he came in and then like the rest was history. We, we, uh, Start training together, and then I got talked into taking one fight, and I did the the one to see what would happen. Man, 40 seconds in, I think, got a finish. Felt great, loved it, and then I was going to be done. And then Michael wanted to fight, but he wanted me to fight with him. So my second fight was his first fight, and I feel like we both went out, got first round finishes, and just like it was just on. We just started traveling and fighting all the time. I think we had. Or I had nine fights in my first year, I think. And uh, yeah, we were just going to Iowa, going all over uh, Missouri and you know, fighting other local hometown guys. We didn't really have a very good fight show locally. So we were always the out of town guys coming in and started making a name for ourselves. And then it just, uh, just kept growing and growing. I've never expected to be here with what I've done in sport, honestly. But, uh, yeah. well, I'll tell you what, man. I mean, kind of listening to that, it's kind of interesting to know that you're, you've made it to where you are with the sport. You know, just kind of like, you're like, man, I just kind of was just out playing around, and somehow I ended up here. So tell us a little bit about your uh, Ultimate Fighter experience. I mean, how, how did you get onto that? What ha how, did you, how did that all have play out for you? Yeah, I mean, uh, it goes back to talking to Michael a little bit. So we had – so back then, it, they had tryouts. You know, they would have a tryout in Chicago – Seattle. I mean, there was all over the place, and they were on random like Tuesdays and stuff. So they wanted serious people to show up. <clears throat> Basically, you would show up, you check in. Um, they would just call two names up, and then you would just start grappling in front of, you know, either Dana or you know Joe Silva or the producers or whatever. They had a little table at the at the front, and multiple of the USC staff and and the uh, oh the producers, depending on what network they were on, was up there at the time. So you do that, and then they call your number, and some stay, some leave. And then you go to go up there, roll two minutes, just be done. And then you do, uh, if you stay, 
then they've got a bunch of coaches that hang out and they just hold tie pads for you and just kind of watch you just move, striking, crack pads, like you're not sparring or anything like that way. And then, uh, you know, they're also print out your your record. And so they, they do some research on like who you fought, what your record so So it's not just what they see that day. And then if they call your name again, then you hang out and you do a, uh, a interview with the, the production crew and stuff. And it's not your, your typical interview. You sit in, they start like just saying obscene things to you. Like see how like your, your personality, how you're gonna react. And you know, do you come back, do you like get offended, do your feelings get hurt, you know, whatever it is. So uh, I always did really good on those. And when they did those tryouts, they, they would do two, three weight classes. You know, they would do 185, 155, heavyweight or whatever you know and then most of the time you could see the turnout and you would you would notice probably what weight class they were going to go with you know sometimes they would do two sometimes they would do one so i always did really well with the the tryout little uh layout the way it did and then most of the time they went with the other weight class so i never made the show <laughs> and then the year they did middleweight i signed with strike force so i couldn't actually do the ultimate fighter show and then uh that was your Court McGee one, and like my boy Chris Camozzi was on it and stuff. And a lot of guys I was coming up with, uh, I think I was 10 and 0 at the time and stuff, and it was like really surprising to make the show. But then, you know, I was signed and just wasn't able to do it. But, uh, you know, it kind of worked out because I made it a few years later whenever I knew I was, you know, there's people that want to get in the UFC, and then you get there and it's really hard to stay there and stuff. So I know that by the time I got in, like I was ready, I could compete with the best guys in the world, and I could stay there for. You know, end up being ten years and stuff, but uh, um, but anyways, as I got there, so Mike Michael made it first. So Michael uh, Michael to make in uh, the GSP and was it Koscheck? I think that's season. Right, yeah, right. and he was on uh, uh, St. Pierre's team, so he made it, and then you know had a really good relationship with the producers and stuff. So after that, it kind of kind of helped my confidence, knowing like, okay, like. Let's do. Let's keep doing it. Like I, I know I've done well, but like I haven't made it yet. Um, but now I know somebody that's made it. I know it's obtainable. Mm -hmm. So I, I kept going, kept doing the tryouts, and then uh, they actually called me for what was that on seventeen? So they called me for sixteen, and that one they didn't do the tryouts. They did uh, just an invite only. Mm -hmm. So invite only, but it was for one seventy. And then so we got there. I made it all the way through, and then they were like, man. We're nervous about you dropping a 170 <laughs> and making it multiple times in a short amount of time. And I was like, I'm not gonna lie, like that's, it's probably gonna be very difficult, you know, <laughs> and stuff. So they're like, okay, well, we're gonna pass you on this one. And then they were like, I think we're doing middleweight next year, like come back. So they end up doing uh, 16, that had probably the, the easiest cast possible. <laughs> I, think, I think I would've walked through that show pretty <laughs> decisively, but, uh, what was that? Was it Colton Smith or I don't know? Some don't some kid won it. I don't know. And then my uh, so the next year I showed up and I show up. I walk in. They're like, just pass your medicals. You're good. <laughs> and I was like, okay. So uh, but then I end up making uh, season seventeen. That I I think to this day it was probably you know I'm not gonna say it's just because I was on it because the producers and the UFC the matchmakers they all are still pretty consistent with it that it was hands down like a special and like one of the more competitive shows I've ever had. You know, it's just, I mean, you're talking about, you got, you know, the the last pick, Kelvin Gastelum, you know, the little <laughs> young pup ends up having a great career, you know, fighting for a title. Uh, Uriah Hall is on there, and everybody thinks, you know, he's this next killer and stuff, the next uh, Anderson Silva who actually beat, you know, Anderson. So uh, we had a very competitive group and stuff, and being able to, outside of the finalist, being the last one from the Ultimate Fighter still, you know, signed to the UFC was, it was cool for me, you know, even though I, I didn't do in the show that I wanted to do, but it was so competitive, they uh, they decided they're just gonna sign everybody to one fight. And then if you won, you kept going. But uh, like well, I said- and That was back in the day where they did the Ultimate Fighter finale where everybody got to fight at the Palms on the yeah, last one, yeah, the last yeah, card, yeah. And, so. Yeah, yeah, they did it. And then I ended up getting hurt, so I was supposed to, uh, I was supposed to fight, I tore my hamstring like two weeks before the fight, and I was, I was panicked because I'm like, okay, am I gonna lose my opportunity? Like, <laughs> they're never gonna give me another fight and stuff. So like, I was uh, I was out with uh, Chael Sonnen because he was getting ready to fight John Jones. So we were kind of part of his camp and we were all getting ready. And so I had him call like the UFC for me. I was like, man, like, 
you've got way more clout and like more respect than I do. Like, <laughs> and I was panicking. Like, no, like they'll give you another shot. You're fine. And then, uh, you know, a few months later, uh, I ended up dropping to 170. Made my debut just at a lower weight class too. And uh, yeah, kind of went from there. Let's talk a little bit about 170 for you, man. I know that uh, you fought most of your career at 170. <laughs> yeah. um, I know you had a lot of really rough weight cuts. Um, Talking about him, though. <laughs> Slender feller. Yeah. You retired at, what, 205? Yep. <laughs> um, yeah. Tell me a little about the decision to, to do 170, why you never made that move up to 185 for more consistently, because I know you had a hard time with that 170 weight yeah. cut. What was kind of behind that decision? Why did you just stay at that route? I wish I had a really clear answer. I don't. So I fought really consistent before the ultimate fight, before uh, the UFC. So I mean, I fought multiple times, and I was just kind of constantly cutting and everything. So like eighty-five wasn't a hard cut, but I mean, like I fought so often that I wasn't able to kind of like drop down and stuff. I was just taking things, and I did. Uh, I fought for Bellator for a catch weight of one eighty. So I made it, and I made it pretty. And that was after, uh, I was like, I don't know, 12 or 13 pro fights in, you know, after my amateur career. So I was fighting 205 and, and 85. So I made it, and I made it pretty easy. And I was kind of talking to my coach at the time. And, you know, we were, uh, after I took my first loss against Tim Kennedy, I, I just got manhandled. I just, you know, now he's a, a beast too, you know, don't get me wrong. But uh, I started thinking about it, and I was like, man, you know, I, I wrestled at 174. So when I was in college, I wrestled 184, 174. And then as I made 74, it, I wasn't, I wasn't uh, competing really at my best. But when with 84, I did. Now, that's the same day weigh in. You're weighing in an hour later, you're wrestling. Right. So with, with MMA, we could have you know a whole day to recover. So I was like, okay, it's another four pounds, but you know I got 24 hours to recover. Let's try it out. So we were just thinking, like, if I'm going to compete with the best guys in the world, I need to have the most competitive edge I can. You know, I need to be in the best shape I can, you know, doing all the extra work. And in order for me to do that, right, in order for me to make 170, everything had to be perfect. My diet had to be money. I, my strength and conditioning had to be spot on. Like, I had to do everything correct, and which I needed to do to compete with the best guys. So that was kind of, I knew, like, I'm one of those guys where if they have, like, a 175, 180, like, that's perfect for me. So it's always pushing everything to get to 70 mm -hmm. you know but you know 85 i can i can make pretty easy. yeah pretty easy stuff back then so it was that was mainly why we stayed there and then you know as the the cuts were getting harder and you know i'm getting older and my body's changing a little bit and i think after so many hard cuts like i drop one low so i spring back up a little bit higher and my walk around weight was getting a little bit higher and stuff so we went ahead and you know after uh, one of the last passing out and it's since happened <laughs> and stuff and once it really I felt like was affecting my fighting when I was scared to really engage or like I would hurt somebody and like I would be holding back because I was so nervous that my body would just like gas out or you know it just wouldn't hold up once I realized it was really hurting my performance you know me and Mark were just kind of looking like all right like it's time to go up and you know and I but I got knocked down to every fight at, at 85 at 205 you know so I uh my power carried my chin carried um you know anything I, I had a little bit more speed and you know I probably could have done a little bit earlier in my career but I mean I said I've, I've had pretty pretty solid string so it's it's hard to say if I should have changed anything but uh once I noticed that my performance was dropping with the weight cuts it was it was time to to go up a little bit let's I, I do want to ask you about some of your injuries. You've done, okay. you've, you've been injury plagued, Oof. you know, a lot yeah. through your career. You talked about having yeah. some knee injuries, yep. which got you into the sport originally. Yeah. Um, tell me about, you know, especially coming back from an injury. I mean, what, how do you prepare for that? Especially, you know, a back injury yeah. or something along those lines. How do you prepare to go in there and know that, you know, you're not the same person you were before. Yeah. You've had this injury. It can happen again. Yeah. You know, how do you get past the mental thing of, of I don't want to end up paralyzed, you know? Yeah, it's, uh, it's hard. Like, I mean, you really you have to, uh, you have to be willing just knowing, knowing that that possibility is there. Like, you just have to live with it. You just have to 
once you make the decision that you're going to put yourself through that again, you kind of have to like let the chips fall and just deal with it. Because if you overly worry, I, I feel like the times I get hurt the most is when I'm trying not to get hurt. I'm trying to like be easy and relax and stuff and uh, trying to pull back on some things. And that's when more just dumb injuries happen. So I think just leaning into it and going and stuff. And like I said, it's, at this point, especially like my last fight coming back from the back injury, my, my body's already shot. It's already beat. I, I got a lot of stuff I got to do to fix my body. I don't even know if it's anywhere possible to get close to being fixed. But um, so I think at that point, I just knew I was so far gone that it, it was getting to the fight I was worried about, mm -hmm. you know, the training you know, preparing like the wrestling aspect of things and just the nonstop grinding and and my body actually held up for this this last fight. I was I was really surprised. I thought like the whole talk was okay, I could fight. Like I can fight my ass off. We're good there. You know, once I get in there and I can just turn my brain off and whatever, flip the switch and I'm not gonna feel anything, I'm just gonna go through it now, then the next day I might be wrecked. But uh <laughs> yeah, but it was one of those where I just uh you know, once I made that decision, it's fine. But I was really surprised about the training that I held up and stuff. But yeah, the the back was bad because I mean, like I said, it it uh it bedridden me for like three months. Like it was it was you know I I didn't know if I would ever be able to like do athletic stuff again. You know, like let alone compete. You know, with the UFC again and stuff. So that was a bad one. Uh, another one that like I've never been gun shy at all. Like I, I re strongly believe in my chin, taking some hard head kicks and. And you know, shots from from big guys, guys that hit hard, guys that knock people out constantly, and so I feel confident there. What threw me off is uh, so I've broken both uh, both orbitals, mm -hmm. and the first time it happened, like I, it was just a weird feeling. I didn't know what was going. So then it's like, okay, well, I'm not worried about like getting knocked out, but like my face is shattering. Like that's a problem. Yeah. So whenever I finally got healed from that, it took me some. That was the first and probably only time it really, it took me back to like. I was I was much different and stuff and go back into sparring and like kind of shine away and a little scared to get hit and stuff. So it took me some some training to to get over that one. That was one that I noticed and I don't know if the back was just I knew it was the end of the career. I knew like we just need to get in there and do it. Mm -hmm. And this was a lot earlier in the career when that when that first happened. But then it happened again, uh, when I fought Trevor Smith. Uh, so my first fight at eighty five. <laughs> the first punch thrown shattered my orbital. And uh but I, I've been there before. I knew what it was, and uh, was just kind of able to, you know, deal with the pain and fight through. And I had a, a three-round decision that I just had to battle through it, and I ended up dominating the fight and stuff, and still won. But yeah, that was. If I didn't have the experience of the first one, uh, I don't know if that would have happened. And stuff. I mean, I definitely had some injuries. <laughs> <laughs> um, man, you you got the opportunity to retire in the UFC cage. Um, you got to, you got the opportunity to retire at home in Kansas City in front of your own crowd. Um, obviously, an emotional moment for you. Um, you know, your daughter came into the cage with you and stuff like that. What did that mean to you that the UFC gave you that opportunity to be able to retire at home in front of your hometown crowd? It, 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 everything, literally everything. I, we always, we always tell these other fighters like. You know, don't don't do the UFC any favors. They're not going to return it. Like they they don't care. Like yes, they care about you, but like in the grand scheme of things, they'll find the next person right behind you and just you know build them up and do your thing. So, you know, taking short notice fights or whatever. Like there's there's being able to to take advantage of an opportunity, mm -hmm. but if it's not also benefiting you, like most of the time, you're not going to get much from them. It's just kind of how it is. Um, and putting the time that I had in this sport. And then, you know, I mean, I've had the ups and downs. I win a couple of fights and like have an injury or, you know, take a close loss or something like that. And then, so I never really got real high up to where like I, where I knew I should be and I could be. And, you know, I mean, I, I can compete with these top 10 guys, top five guys. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I've, I've been in the training room with title challengers, title, you know, like world champions. Uh, there's not much difference, you know, so but knowing that I was never one of those guys, like they didn't really owe me anything. And the fact that they were, uh, cause the card was full when I, when I started talking to them, you know, they, they filled the card not knowing it was coming to Kansas city. Mm -hmm. So they just kind of had the card full stuff. So they put, they hit the location. <clears throat> I immediately reached out. I'm like, bro, like 
I, I need like I'm I'm right about time to come. This is, it was really a little soon for my comeback, but I was wanting to get some on the book soon. And once that happened, I was like, hey, like what do we gotta do to make this work? You know, and they said it was full, but you know, Nick was really happy that I wanted to come back and fight again and stuff. And we kind of we kind of had to make the uh, the retirement story to get on the card. Mm. Like I really wasn't sure if I was gonna retire yet. I had <laughs> you know, I had uh, that one plus another fight on my contract, you know, and I mean I could always try to find another contract if I if I wanted to, you know, and it was just I wasn't sure. And then once I once I kind of said it and agreed to it, it started like getting in my mind. I was like, okay, like I kind of welcomed it a little bit more, mm -hmm. uh, accepted it, and I still wasn't sure. I was gonna leave everything open ended at the end of the fight. You know, I was gonna sure. say my I was gonna say my goodbyes to like the local crowd because it'd be it for sure been the last time they ever saw me fight live. So I was gonna kind of have uh, you know say some stuff, whatever, and like, man, I got in there. And I just, I felt great. The like the walkout was perfect. You know, I had the Red Kingdom chant and then right into my walkout song and like the crowd's going insane and just the reception was great. And I get in the cage, I look up and I see like just a sold out crowd just chanting and you know, they had the whole like chop and stuff going. It was like everything in that fight went perfect almost, it just, is uh, I couldn't have wrote the story better, and once I sit there and like got some, I got three rounds in the cage. If I if I finished him in the first round, I don't think I would have stopped. I don't think I would have been done. But like getting like a fun three round battle and like just tying back in the cage, and like between the rounds, hearing the crowd and seeing stuff and just getting the full experience. I got done, and I just kind of looked up and it just hit me. And I was like, yeah, like we, I'm, I'm never matching this or beating it or coming <laughs> close to this. Uh, and it just made sense. Like I, we always talk about fighters and people in the combat sports that just, they over, they hang out too long, right? You know, they, uh, they overlast their stay and you know, they're even some of the greats and all of a sudden they start losing and then they just, and then the people that, the newer fans that come in don't know like what someone's actually done. And then they just kind of see this and that's what they're judged on. and. And stuff. So I mean, even though you know, I had a couple of years off with my back, like my I got blasted with comments and you know messages and stuff. And like, man, like I didn't know who you were before. Like you look like you could compete for the you know like make a run at two hundred five. <laughs> like like people were trying to like push you like like to keep going and like I'm stay gonna be at two hundred five. Two hundred five is wide open right I mean, now. It is. It, it really is. Two hundred five is wide open. You know the cuts. I mean, like I could take multiple fights and short notice and stuff. And it uh, you know, it really. I, I could definitely make that run. And and I mean like I said, I mean one of my one of my really good friends, training partners, you know, is highly ranked. So Anthony Smith is highly ranked, yeah. still doing well. And like, you know, we've been we've been neck and neck like our whole career. Like we've kinda we fought the same people with <laughs> never things. So like, you know, he had a good solid run, uh, right when he went up and had a couple big key wins and it shot him up there. But it's like, I mean, we're right there. I had Dustin Jacoby who I trained with every day in, you know, top fifteen and so well, hey, let's not talk yet. Retirement, retirement looks good on you. I'm, I mean, it, hey, I will. I'm just saying. I if, think your wife might murder you. If the right mat, hey, if the, I'm just saying, if someone a heavyweight falls out, <laughs> and I can get four wins and four weight classes, I just say, I mean, how many people's done that one? Only a few's done three, and I've had three finishes in three weight classes. So that's it's just something I could definitely hang my hat on. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm good. I'm retired. <laughs> You know, um, man, I'm just, I'm just in it, but I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. We'll, uh, All right. I got one more thing one for more. you, man. I want to talk, talk post retirement. Post I mean, a lot of the stuff that you've got going on now, you had going while you're still fighting the UFC. No. Um, but you're definitely not leaving yourself with nothing to do out of your <laughs> retirement. Um, tell us a little bit about what you got going on outside of the UFC, outside of retirement, and kind of what you're, you've got going on now. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I've been doing this stuff for a long time. You know, as you said, we uh, I opened up my gym nine years ago. So actually coming up, uh, I think this year, uh, or this month, it was, uh, was nine years. And, you know, we, we've, we've done some rebranding and everything. So I've always kind of joked around with these guys. I'm like, hey, like the second I'm done fighting, like the coach, you guys gonna have me a lot more and stuff. <laughs> and uh, I feel like just now's that time, you know, so I'm, I'm doing, just double down on, on coaching and the team and uh, the jiu-jitsu tournaments and the MMA team 
uh, and I'm really just trying to do what I can to help this sport in this community um, as, as much as I can. So um, just continue to, to grow the gym. I try to do a lot for uh, the law enforcement too. So I've got, uh, I've got some post-certified classes and stuff that I'll show. Um, I've got a good connection with uh, the trainers and stuff for all the defensive tactics for the law enforcement. So I go there and train with those guys a lot. Uh, I've, got, I've got law enforcement in my family. It's just something that's always close to me. So that's another plan that post-retirement I was wanting to get more and more in. So now's that time and stuff. I've been doing it for a while, and now it's uh, another thing I'm going to do. So with the gym, the law enforcement stuff, I also own my own or a co-own a promotion, so Synergy Fighting Championships. And, uh, yeah, I'm just going to have another platform to build these guys. And, again, this this sport's my life. You know, it's it's – it took my life over. It's something I didn't plan to do at all, and it changed my life for for the better and stuff. It made me who I am. So it's done so much for me personally. I want to be able to uh, to help guide some of these other people to you know teach them a better way because I've seen a lot of fighters. You know, they they put all this time in. They have nothing to show. To